for, for many, many years, and it's a misunderstanding on your part, it's not a misunderstanding on the part of systematic theologians that have recognized that the relationship between the before, before the decree and after the decree is not a temporal one, it's a logical one. And So I had one other question about, um, so you mentioned Turretin. So Turretin affirms, like, well, we're going to talk about this later, um, like the logical uh, moments in the life of God. So you mentioned Turretin. So Turretin affirms, like, well, we're going to talk about this later, um, like the logical uh, moments in the life of God. If you could point people somewhere to, to go and read more and perhaps, you know, in favour of each your different perspective. James, w what would be sort of one, one place you attend people, apart from your own website, obviously, uh, <laughs> but what, what book would you say, you know, specifically would, might help people to read and, and understand your perspective uh, well, on, on Molinism? Well, let me go old school. And I think Francis Turretin did a fine job in dealing with this issue uh, way back when. The second kind of objection that White kept pushing, I guess I'll call the, the late to the game objection. And so this view is going to say that um, this objection is going to go any theological or philosophical view that is late to the game in church history is suspect. Molinism didn't hit the scene until the 1500s. That's late to the game and thus it's wow. suspect. But I just point out that in dealing with our subject, Molinism, we're dealing with a perspective unknown in the history of the church for 1500 years. And it doesn't come up, come into expression until someone is seeking to fundamentally undercut the gospel being preached by the reformers, by Calvin and Luther. And so it's a more of a modern situation, but it wasn't something that people reading scripture for 1500 years said, oh yeah, there it is. And of systematic theologians that have recognized that the relationship between the before before the decree and after the decree is not a temporal one, it's a logical one. And so the concept of logical moments, it did not exist prior to John Duns Scotus in the late 1200s. Hmm. So the concept, so those, these concepts can be like late to the game. And then you're gonna have to say, Ooh, well, therefore they're deeply suspicious. Yeah. Uh, and so these scotistic concepts, they're really crucial to the development of both Molinism and Calvinism. And so Calvinists even have these really superheated debates that we'll talk about later over the precise ordering of these logical moments. Mm -hmm. So if these concepts are deeply suspect for Molinism, then they're going to be deeply suspect for Calvinism. Okay, so early, earlier you said that uh, Scotus's notions of logical moments uh, kind of set the stage for both Calvinism and Molinism. And so this is how the earliest version of Calvinism goes. Um, and so it's relying on Scotus's notion of logical moments. But when you get to a little bit later in the, the history of Calvinism, they just kind of go nuts with these logical moments. Mm -hmm. They just start multiplying them at like a very exponential rate. So you get these debates about the logical order of salvation and the logical order of God's decrees. So here's a big question that they ask. So did God decree the fall of man logically before he decreed to send Jesus Christ? Mm -hmm. And that's like a really big debate amongst Calvinists. And so you see these different groups pop up. There's these three groups of Calvinists called infralapsarians, superlapsarians, and, Ar and Emeraldians. And all three of these uh, Calvinist groups, they're adding even more logical moments into the story. And then they have these really intense debates about the exact order of those logical moments. So this, this scotistic notion of logical moments, it becomes a very huge deal for Reformed theology. And you could get in a lot of trouble if you had the wrong order of moments, because your next door neighbor might be like, eh, you got, the, you got the wrong order there. Wow. Yeah, both Calvinists and Molinists, 
are relying on this deeply philosophical notion of logical moments. This philosophical notion is not immediately derived from any biblical text. And this is a philosophical notion that is it's, it's late to the game in church history. Hmm. Okay. All right. Well, let's then go back to the two objections that you mentioned uh, from James White. So remind us what those objections are mm -hmm. and summarize how you would respond to them. Okay. So that first objection is that a view is suspect if it is deeply philosophical and not directly derived from scripture. And then the second objection is that a view is suspect if it is late to the game in church history. So, well, Calvinism relies on a highly philosophical notions like universal divine causality, these logical moments embedded in a single timeless moment and so on. And all of this is deeply philosophical and you cannot derive any of it directly from scripture. This is because the Bible knows absolutely nothing of divine timelessness, nor does it anywhere suggest universal divine causality, nor does the Bible anywhere mention anything that looks remotely like logical moments. And all these are just deeply philosophical notions that arise relatively late in church history. So according to White's line of reasoning, we should infer that Calvinism is suspect. Wow. Calvinism is just nothing more than man's wisdom that cannot be found in the earlier <laughs> teachings of scripture. And I'll go one wow. step further. So I think what's going on here is that we should actually find Calvinism even more suspect than Molinism. So that's a plot okay. twist. Plot twist. Yeah. Right. <laughs> all right. Yeah. I always love a good plot twist. Yeah. So, <laughs> so earlier when I mentioned that uh, Calvinists, they just start multiplying these the, the number of logical moments in the timeless life of God. And so they get into these superheated debates over the precise logical order of these decrees. And this is, I mean, it's highly speculative philosophical debates that in, like include like five, six, eight logical moments in the life wow. of God. They just keep going and going. That's way more than Molinism's three mm. logical moments. So you got to kind of like, take a breath here and be like, hang on a second. Right. Molinism would be a, a simpler explanation then, right? Seems it's simpler at this point. It does. But again, you cannot find these debates about the precise logical order of the decrees in these earlier time periods in church history. And most certainly you're not going to find it in the Bible. So Calvinism is engaged in way more philosophical speculation that is very late to the game than Molinism. Hmm. So if White's objections are any good, then he has provided us very powerful reasons for rejecting Calvinism. Talk about a self-defeating objection. Mm -hmm. An inconsistency drives me crazy.